Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772 7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit kogpassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Money Factor here on The Sphere. My name is LaShonda Johnson, certified financial educator and also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance. And I am Tony Sanders, also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance and your personal financial professional. Welcome back, LaShonda. Yes. Can you believe it's the week before Christmas? I'm, 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 I'm no, I can't. I cannot believe this it month is the week shot before Christmas. By, and I'm, I'm just like, so Monday... It's Christmas. Monday is Christmas. I'm not ready. Santa, can you so go back? It, wait a minute. So this is, this is our <laughs> Christmas edition <laughs> yes. because we won't see yes, you. Yes, and we didn't even realize that it kind of just slipped up on us. I so know, I'm, I'm right. sorry. Can we have a little bit more time, Santa? Right, I don't know. You know, right. uh, can we like extend a few days? That hey, would be I, really, I bet you really a lot nice. of people would like a few more days, a few yes. more weeks to kind of get it right for 2017. But guess I what? I, I, there hasn't even been like the festive attitude around have, everything. You know what? I you think know? because here in Houston, there were so much going on yes i think that it kind of overshadowed what's you know the reason for the season but you know thank god that you're alive that you're here yes. that you have your health have you have your celebrate. strength absolutely we do have a lot to celebrate and the reason for, for the season mm -hmm. mm. and so i'm just saying normally i hear a lot of christmas music on the radio right. i see lights everywhere i mean it's just i feel festive and right, i don't feel right. festive and maybe I don't feel festive because I'm I got my head buried in the news and the the news is not festive. Okay, so before you go on, <laughs> let's do this. I want to really um, you know, dedicate this show to one of our Houston own who has um, you know, gone on home. Um Man, this was a big shocker to all of us here in the Houston community. Um my brother from um my church, uh, which is um the Fort Bend Church, and we lost uh, a radio personality from Magic 102, who has been just a, a man, just a, a jewel in our community as far as helping the community, a Christian brother. And I, I was just really shocked to hear that uh, Baseman, Robert Baseman Washington, passed on. And I think wow. that's, that's, I, um, I saw it on Facebook. Oh my, I couldn't believe it, you guys. I had to, you know, kind of text some text, uh, some church members to, you know, just to reach out, say, hey, is this true? Because, you know, a lot of times on you Facebook, hear you hear so many things and mm -hmm. I even said please tell me this is a hoax and she said no I'm sorry but it's not a hoax you know so that's real good so I, I'm like you know we have got to you know just take every day like it's no tomorrow mm -hmm. you know enjoy your family you know and enjoy life because it's not promised to us um, yes. each and every day is uh, just a jewel and that's how you have to treat it like there is no tomorrow right well you don't know you don't we don't know, we don't know if there's gonna be a tomorrow right uh, we all pray and hope that that would be the situation for us. So um, as far as that's concerned, you know, you really do have to deal with today because that's all Absolutely. you're guaranteed while you're here. And you're not even guaranteed to live through today. Through the day. Um, but while you're here, you know, it, it's it's we got to do the best and make the best of every opportunity. Right. Uh, and do the best that we can do that we know how to do um, and, and, and make make every every day valuable. Yeah. 
absolutely day valuable so that's yeah I, 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 <laughs> I thought it kind of scared me, me. <laughs> like i was like what's going on right 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 so <laughs> yeah with that being said you know this is why we are, we're, we're shooting so hard to be the resource in our community mm -hmm. to help people with the planning process because one thing that i can guarantee i can't guarantee you anything else but i can guarantee you one day we all will have to leave this earth oh yeah that that's for certain absolutely uh that that's not optional it's not an option <laughs> nobody was brought here with a guaranteed, um, you know, uh, life. A, a life right. Or uh, we all have an expiration date, mm. and, and we don't know what that is. Right. So, um, yes, so our goal and our objective is to help you, you know, live this thing called life the best way possible mm -hmm. uh, as far as your money is concerned because that's necessary to be able to function here. Absolutely. And, um, and, and even when you leave here, you oh have to God. have some money. You still have to have some money. Yes. Right. I mean, you got to have it while you're here you, and you need it when you leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, it right. is a necessary evil. Absolutely. You know, because some people view it as evil. I don't necessarily. Um, it you depends have to on have what it. you do with it, but we right. have to have it and we got to be smart with it. So we want to start off today talking about some of the things that are going to take place in 2018 mm. we're, we're you know we're already talking about 2018 right christmas like you said is already it's monday here. right so basically you guys uh we've got to you know make sure that we are equipped to be able to handle things that are coming our way and they're coming fast fast if you're not keeping up we're doing our very best to keep you up to date here on the money factor with all of the changes that are happening amidst us and they do personally affect each and every one of us right and so maybe not you personally but somebody you oh, know somebody you know but i mean i i haven't seen a policy yet that someone is not going to be affected by absolutely and so we're just going to bring a few of them now uh, i know this wednesday they're going to conclude some of the decisions about the tax bill so you're not going to see us next week, but you'll see us the following week. And we're definitely going to have a conversation about it. But here's some other things you need to be aware of that's going to be happening in 2018. First of all, we look forward, Tony, when we work in a corporate environment, mm -hmm. you know, to get that, you know, that email where it says, go ahead and come on in. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, review you for your raise. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody looks forward to that to email. That, mm -hmm. It's raise That time. annual. Mm -hmm. You start doing a happy dance and stuff. You know, you, you, you start getting excited you know push, putting a little bit more effort mm -hmm. in hoping that work a little harder <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. hoping that you know you can get some brownie points on the back end right well unfortunately uh-oh i hate to bust your bubble but uh raises are not looking good for 2018 if what? you know no so we here here here's here's the real realistic situation that's going on in our world don't expect a big pay raise in 2018 mm. okay so if you're making that long walk down to your boss's office, don't go with some expectations of you going to be getting like five, six, seven percent. I don't even know if they do that anymore no, at all. No, Shonda, they don't do um, that. But let's 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 look at what you can be expecting if you get one. Now, let me just say that. Let me disclaimer that because like everybody that does not even get one. Yes. So don't get your hopes up for a big salary boost next year. OK, a report from the um, consulting firm. Uh, uh, corn of uh, corn ferry is that says that says corn ferry uh, predicts that workers around the world will get a real pay raise of just mm, 1.5 percent on average. 1.5 percent. What's inflation? <laughs> Two. What's in place? 2.5 to 3.9%. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. You're not even beating so inflation. That's the smallest bump forecast in five years. The real pay figures are calculated by subtracting inflation from expected salary increases. So, yes, you guys, you need to understand inflation. That's why we teach you that right. so you can understand whether or not you're actually getting a pay raise commensurate to uh, inflation. So, <laughs> American workers are in line for about 3% pay raises. But two percent inflation means they'll end up paying only getting you know only one percent, uh, you know, or better. That's it. Wow. That's it. So we're not just talking. Look at this. Um, Britain, Albania, Egypt, and Nigeria have it much much worse. So workers there, um, they, in these countries, will see their raises wiped out entirely by price hikes. So they're not as fortunate as us in other companies. Workers in Asia are better in better shape. Oh, so their real wage increase is expected to grow by 2.8%. China employees uh, will expect to receive an increase of about 4.2%. Wow. So what's up, America? 
I mean, mm-hmm. why, 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 why are we just right. receiving? Oh my gosh. So why is this crumbs. important? That's exactly what it is. Crumbs. Why is this important? Because you're going to make your budget for 2018. Hopefully you're sitting down making that right now. And if you make it, then you can't say, well, I can do this because I'm expected to get more. Mm -hmm. No. So now you've got to trim the fat on the inside or you've got to increase your cash flow. I tell you one thing, you all better increase your cash flow because it doesn't look like things are going to slow down anytime soon. Things are not decreasing. They're constantly going up and your pay is not going up at the same rate. You must increase your cash flow. I, I can't express that enough. Man, that's why we have workshop one. I, I Just so early in the show, I have to tell you about it. If you have not been able to come to our workshop one, which is increase your cash flow and debt management. That's the first thing you should put on your to-do list for 2018. You must attend this workshop so that you can increase your cash flow and decrease your uh, your debt management. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make it without it, period. No. Period. No. And, 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 we need to just really be real, you know, because oftentimes we're not real. We're not real with ourselves about what's actually happening what's around us. What's going on, right. Or we're operating in, um, what's the mode I want to say? Well, desperation for sure. But, you know, the fly kind of fly by the seat of your pants mode. Well, I think we're just too complacent. Yeah, that's you, what that's we, We're just I'm too complacent. America, really we I'm are too for. complacent. Um, We've been oh, doing the same thing for so long. It'll be okay. Yes. It's going to be okay. It'll work itself out. How? I'll, I'll figure it out. How? I'll cross that bridge when I get to when? it. When? That's what we want to ask you. Yes. Those are the questions we're asking you. So you've got to be prepared for these things. So, you know, um, even myself, you know, in our declarations that we made, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I said one of the things that I declare, we're talking about declare Lord, 2018. I'm so, I'm so hungry. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> this child got me on these smooth. I'm hungry, y'all. I'm hungry. <laughs> But you know what? It's all about being disciplined. It's all about being consistent and making up your mind to do something different, to do something different so that you can achieve your goals. You have to listen. Not only do you have to achieve your goals, but like you said, you've got to have a new game plan. A new you mind. You can't even have, even if things were great for you in 2017, you still have to have a new I game plan. I want it to be greater. In 2018, because right. you want them to be greater, and you cannot go into 2018 with the same mindset as you had in 2017 or the operating, the way you operate, because 2018 is going to be different. And right. we're going to share some more about that. But it's the time now in our show that we need to talk about our first sponsor, which is Elite Dental Wellness. So it's that time, you guys, you got a couple of weeks left before the year ends in your HSA accounts. Go get your dental work done. Perfect person to reach out for that is Elite Dental Wellness. Their vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We're committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness at 713-789-8680. We got the thing. We don't have a thing. thing. What happened? (laughs) We love that. Okay. So, man. I'm 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 at a loss for words because I I keep like I said I keep my head buried into the news about all the things that are coming up especially right. as it relates to money mm-hmm. so we already know we're not going we're not getting very much no. happening none much is happening on the way of raises uh, let's go back to the article and see if it has anything else to say Tony it says uh, let's see where are we why am I not getting a real raise people oh. want to know hmm. I want to know, too. What's the problem? Why am I not getting a real raise? <laughs> hey, hey, you said real raise. Just real. a real, yeah, yes, real raise. Real. That's important. Because, you know, hey, the, the, everything else is just a joke. It says, um, uh, the financial crisis a decade ago feels like the distant memory, but workers are not getting their share of the pie despite their tight job market. Experts say the reasons behind the problem are many and varied. A decline in labor union membership it has hurt their workers, helped inflate the pay packages for managers, according to the IMF research. Wow. wow. So the, even the managers. Memories of financial crisis and worries about the future also make business owners reluctant yeah. to to Give raise wages. I can see it. Wow. Then there's an 
underemployment problem, the rise of informal employment, and also called a gig economy, means many people find themselves working part-time even though they would prefer a full-time job. The age and the wrong skills often create barriers. Man, I can relate to that because you know what? I see a lot of people and they're having to work part-time because mm-hmm. they're not giving full-time. And they, they have to take what they can get. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. if I don't give you full-time, you don't get the full benefits and I can save some money. That's the idea. Hello. Uh, but, but you know, there's people that legitimately want a part-time mm-hmm. because they have a full-time. So and that's they, knocking them out. They, you don't get that. You don't get because that. Because full-timers are taking But you know what? I, I've noticed, too, that even uh, full-times are not even getting all the hours. So now what they're doing, so a part-time, they have so many part-timers. You get a day or two here. It's not real part-time. You're talking about real wages because you don't give me the real hours. You're not giving me the hours that, uh, you know, I need. So I'm not making real money. Hello. Strive. I mean, people are fighting to to survive, and it's it's mm-hmm. really tough. So, um, man, this show is very important because you need to be abreast of what's going on. So, in order for you to make sure you can go back and view this show in its entirety, you're going to need to go to the Spear and subscribe. We want you to do that right now, this moment, this second. And when you're there, we want you to write a review. There is a place there that you can write a review. We want to know what you think. Con- uh, constructive criticism. And compliments are accepted. Absolutely. Uh, We would also like for you to um, uh, share the show. Got to share the show. Got to share it. Because I don't know who you know. Mm. We don't know who you know. Tony don't know who you know. And so if you share the show, you can reach the people that we don't know. Then while you're there, we do provide the show to you completely complimentary. Mm. We'd like for you to donate. We'd love it. Okay. You can do it one time or you can be a continuous patron. There's an option there for both. We'd like you to select one. We'd like it. We'd love it. Okay. Uh, we want to continue to do great things for you here at the Sphere, and your contributions are accepted. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, the show is not ending, but Facebook Live does not last forever. 15 minutes is all we get. Did I just so, hear that ping? He's so late. <laughs> Is that the thing that is ending? <laughs> Facebook is ending, or is that from the dentist thing? Both. <laughs> okay. Uh, well. Okay. He's, he's <laughs> making it all work. You that know, like hilarious. we try to do with our finances. Yes. Make it all work. Okay. Oh boy. Don't be like our director and be late on stuff. You know. <laughs> I was like, I think I oh heard the ping. Okay. So, so real raises. You're looking. They're looking yes. for some real raises. Some People real want money. Real money. Right. Absolutely. Man. They're like, um, we cannot make it with that. So, hmm. anything else this article has to say? Hmm. Or are we done? Okay. So on to the next mm-hmm. because here's what people are saying, Tony. Let's go to the next article. Let's read that. <laughs> <laughs> That's yours. Woo! You for many, the rent is still too damn high. Let you, me, I, I, I like the that. emphasis she put on, on damn high because it is but that's what people are saying right right you know they're like come on now y'all now even in texas even in houston and we have a good market we used to be considered the low you know low mm-hmm. place to live rent uh-uh but believe here. it or not we still are we compare to yes compare east to and west coast we mm-hmm. are um but in general that's what people are saying wow it's too high oh my gosh well let's see what they have to yes. say says millions of Americans can't afford their rent. Wow. Nearly half of all renter households, almost 21 million, were considering cost burden in 2016. According to a new report from Harvard's Joint Center of Housing Studies, that means that they pay more than 30%, 30%. of their income to cover their housing, which includes utilities. Yes, that's true. What that's, you talking about, Willis? Woo! <laughs> it's 30%? true. 30%? It's true. Um, and I, we even actually did a one of our podcast shows talked about rent being the majority of the expense that right. people have mm-hmm. in their budget. Right. And the highest amount, especially for millennials, mm-hmm. the most of their money is going towards where they to live, where they live. Yes. Wow. Yes. And so um, you pay to stay. You're not playing. And you're paying a lot. A lot. According to what America says, they're saying it's not cheap to live. So, I mean, my thing is, okay, if rent is getting to be too outlandish, then you need to look at, you know, home ownership. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because at least you have some equity. Because that sounds like a, absolutely. At least you have some equity. Give me something for my money. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're giving you the nice amenities and the gyms and the pools and the, you know, granite tops, all the stuff you want in your home. Hmm. But you pay for that. You pay for it. Yes. Absolutely. So it's kind of like when you get ready to go to the convenience store. 
you know, I, I was watching something on TV o- over the weekend, and it said, um, somebody said, well, wow, this thing is high in here. The lady said, you're paying for convenience. It's a convenience store. So uh, mm-hmm. renting is, you know, convenience. You're getting the convenience of living someplace temporarily with all the luxuries that you like, and they're Without charging the you for all the responsibilities. It. Correct. Mm-hmm. So maybe you don't pay property taxes, mm-hmm. but you're paying theirs because <laughs> the rent is high enough. You better know it. So that's how that works. Wow. They're, they're going to win. Anybody that's leasing something to you they need to see a profit so there's a markup there's a markup on everything Everything. Mm -hmm. so including where you live so um let's go back to the article let's see it says some renters are in an even tighter jam 25 percent of renter households pay more than half of their income for housing Mm, wow mm-hmm. the good the, news yes what <laughs> is the good Tell news us. the good news is that the number of off cost burden renters is dropping in 2014 21 po- it dropped in 2014 21.3 million renters were shelling out more than 30 percent for housing uh, losing such a big chunk of your paycheck to housing can have a long-term impact on your savings Hello. absolutely it can and the force the tough spending decisions it can also worsen inequality among renters absolutely and report found yes wow you know what that that is so true right there but you know what they're gonna have to do something different yeah so um, how can you save it's hard. It's hard. So it makes it not optional for you to increase your cash flow. You got to have some extra money coming from somewhere. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have to ask our producer, Gary Lee. We need now we need the warning things. The dun, dun, dun. So when we read stuff like this. Right. Because that and is. You hear that. That means listen, take notes, pay attention. Right. You know, so that's what we need. That's, know, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's dun, a big deal. Dun, dun, you know, yeah. warning, warning, warning. Uh, we're going to alert you through the podcast and let you know what's serious that you need to take note Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Because, okay, here's the thing, Tony. I'm think- This is what I'm thinking about. Okay, if I'm already not making enough income to begin with, and then where I live is going to take most of it. 30%. I, I, 30%. So we encourage people to do 70-30, mm-hmm. which 70% of your income should not I mean, 70%, you, your income should not take care of your, yeah, right. Your household. Um, help me. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you, you never want your household um, expenditures to exceed the 70%. 70% of your income. Right. Right. And if you're already spending 30%. 30% of that 70% is already housing. going into housing. And so we're saying you should at least pay yourself 30%. So housing and saving is con- accounting for 60%. That only gives you 40% left, left mm-hmm. to manage your utilities debt management so you tell me if you can afford not to have a budget we'd like for you to chime in and yeah, let us I know hear i crickets. mean you can send us a yeah uh, that, that's a, that's a, 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 hey please shout out to us um and send us an email on info at houston housewives of finance.com you can email me personally lashonda j at Houston Housewives of Finance.com. I'm Tony S. at Houston Housewives of Finance.com. You can also reach us at 1 844 700 What is our number? 1 what? <laughs> 1 844 700 4463. 4463. There you go. But you know what? You have to reach us. 30% of your income, think about it. If 30% of your income is going towards your housing, I'm afraid to look at your other expenditures. No, I'm, I'm afraid to look I'm at scared. your budget. Do well, you I'm even not have scared. a budget? We do this every day. We do it we every know day. The situation. We know. We but do you know. know? Do you no. know that no. your housing is taking up 30 in some accounts they said 50%? I mean, this is where this is the year of where people got to get active. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to get. You have to get. You must get. Sit down and look at your expenditures right. and see where they're going. You know, look at, you know, look at what you make. And look at what you spend for your mortgage or rent. This is really applying towards people who rent Mm -hmm. primarily. But look at your rent and maybe you want to consider living someplace else, you know, or again, you have to have another source of income to help to mitigate that cost. And and let's say this before I I go to our next uh, sponsor. Also to those people, LaShonda, who are living above their means and your mortgage is more than 30% or it's more than what you can afford. Correct. 
And sometimes these are places that, you know, it's just we like this area. Mm -hmm. We like this place. Right. But, you know, let's start asking ourselves, can we afford can these Can we afford things? it? So with that so, being said, this portion of the show is being sponsored by The Sphere. Are you starting a business and looking for a place to advertise? Or do you have a need to reach thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content, delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as in modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789, or send an email over to advertise at the TV. Yes, get in touch with the Sphere. Get in touch with our producer... We got, some new so we, we got some new sound effects going on. But let me tell you something. There's something going on in the studio was that today. Ching -ching or was, oh, that was, oh ching -ching. that was Ching Ching. Because I, I see LaShonda over here oh, fixing her I head. didn't know what that was. Wait a minute. Let me tell you what I got going on today in the studio. He's playing with the soundboard. She's doing hair and playing with her rings and stuff. I don't know where to look, y'all. I don't know where to look. Contact. Contact the spear. Man. It's money. It's it's money Monday. I so heard the hey. money. I heard, I heard the money. There we go. <laughs> I love the ching ching. Okay, wow. so now we we're gonna have a ching ching, a thing, and a uh, 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 alarm. Uh, alarm. Okay, those are all the things. Sound we the need. alarm. Okay. Yes. Um, so going back, <laughs> going back to uh, the uh, article. Uh, where it talks about, uh, we're talking about this this high rent. Okay, this shift along with high building and land costs has called developers to focus on bringing more high-end units to the market. Can you do me a favor? Can you go back to above right there? That's important. Oh, the affluent renters. Yes. Okay, so affluent renters have driven almost 30% of renters' growth in the past decade. So let's talk about that. Hmm. More than 18% of renters, uh, renter households earn at least $100,000 up from 12% in 2006. So we do have affluent people coming here from the West and East Coast. And that's cheap to them. And it's cheap to them. So they're like, oh, it's just 1000 Oh, right. it's just 1500 Oh, it's just 2000 We're used to paying 4000 if right. you live in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We're used to paying 4500 if you mm -hmm. live in New York for a cracker box. Mm -hmm. You guys, you came over here and disrupted things for us <laughs> in Texas. I'm just saying, okay? Because you see that's up 12%. And that's because of your affluency. We have to pay more. So it, it, that's very important um, to understand why the cost right. is going up. And, you know, a lot of places that rent, they, they articulate that. They do say, well, you know, things have gone up. Uh -huh. You know, we have and, migrants coming mm -hmm. from other and places. And we have people that are paid for and it. And people pay for it. Right. Oh, they're so quick to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody has any problem paying for right. that. Because I look at them like, with a straight face, you just said mm -hmm. that amount. You right. know, that's a mortgage. Yeah, but people pay for it. Mm -hmm. And people are paying right. for it. And you know what? What's not negotiable is we have to have a place to live. You have to have a roof over your and head. And so, therefore, we um, sometimes, you know, we're willing to take that extra money and put it towards rent just so we can enjoy where we live. But, again, what are your options? Explore your options. You know, we're about options on this show. Absolutely. So explore your options or explore the opportunity to make more money. Those are the only two choices you have. Either going to make some more to make it make sense, mm -hmm. or you're gonna sacrifice and not do some other things like save right. and like eat. <laughs> Hello? Um, or eat less. Right. Or party less. Just to live in that you're affluent gonna, you know, complex. Just to live in that affluent complex. Mm -hmm. I hope they have a lot of amenities where they're feeding you a couple of times a week. Mm. You know. Anyway, mm -hmm. just moving on, let's go to the high land costs. So now the units are more expensive. Because they're having to spend more on the land to Absolutely. build the units. Mm -hmm. And land and is so, expensive. You know, land is expensive, but you also know that they're going to they're gonna pay themselves back. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to create anything if they don't have a profit. They don't right. see a profit margin. So can we go back to the article? Please, sir, Gary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, we've seen fewer and fewer rental units available at lower price points, explains Spader. Um, or is that Spader? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So there are two primary challenges. One is to expand the availability of rental assistance. And the other is to find ways to increase the contribution of new rental units that are made available 
at lower price points. I don't see that one happening. I don't see that happening. I don't either. Especially all the construction no, we have here. I don't. And 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 the lower your income, the more likely you are to feel squeezed by your rent. Yes, mm, absolutely. Middle and low income renters are most are the most likely to pay a disproportionate share of their income to cover rent, according to the study. Over the past 15 years, more than half of the growth in cost uh, burden renters has been among those earning less than thirty thousand dollars. What what you say? Wow. Hmm. Less than thirty thousand. Those are the ones that are feeling the pinch the most. First of all, I don't understand how you make it on thirty thousand. Those are the ones who need Even to increase in their cash flow. Those are the ones who need to start a business. Those are the ones that need to contact the Houston Housewives of Finance mm-hmm. and make your mind up and make a decision to do something different in 2018 because what you've been doing is not working for you. No. You cannot tell me that you can live on $30,000. And 30000 is a gross. That's not even the net. Oh. Okay, but let's say it is the net. Mm. Still. What? Because, okay, <laughs> if we're doing the math, let's take 30% of $30,000. That's how much you work. That's nine thousand. That f- nine thousand of that is going just to make sure you live, <laughs> okay, um, for the year. And that's not even quite right because thirty percent of your monthly income is going towards your, you, which you, your annual would be thirty. So you, you take know thirty thousand, break it down by twelve. If bottom line, it's not enough. They're struggling. It's they're, not enough. They're struggling. I don't really care how you slice it or dice it. They're struggling. They're robbing it's Peter to pay Paul. Every month you're having a conversation with yourself. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this rut? It's the same conversation that you've been having for your, with yourself for so long. But at some point you've got to make up your mind. You've got to make a decision that I want change. That I want, I've got to take some action here. You've got to take action and change your life. I yeah. can't do it for you. LaShonda can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Here we are. We've been a resource for you to give you this information. Man, you can tell. If I was making $30,000 a year, I would be busting my butt to call somebody. Help me. Yes. Help me. Yes. So, and if even if you're, if you're consistently operating in the red, then that's another reason to say, help me. Help me. You know, if you can't save anything right for a rainy day help me and if you're in the black and you can't save anything oh you need that, help especially you especially, need help especially because uh, you know there are people that you're they're right. not they're not struggling so to speak but they're they have some habits they need to you know change mm-hmm. like spending mm-hmm. they spend, <laughs> <laughs> they, spend <laughs> they spend too much right so they cannot save anything So, um, again, what is your 2018 going to look like? We're asking you to declare it. You know, go to any of our Facebook posts, and if you see a post that says declare uh, 2018, declare live, go ahead and declare. Go ahead and say it. Make up your mind. Think through it. But don't wait until January to make a decision. First of Mm -hmm. all, January 1st, nobody's thinking about decisions. Mm -mm. You know, they're not really declaring their New Year's resolutions then. They're partying or they're bringing in the New Year. And the second day, you're recovering from the first day. day. And then the third day, you're like, oh, wow. It's like, okay, now I'm serious. I want to make some changes. Right. Don't wait to January the 3rd. You still have two weeks left in this month to start making some changes or making some decisions for change right now. Right. And put it in action, just like you are. You you didn't wait to January to say, I'm going to start walking and checking my blood pressure you know, I didn't. I, you know, I decided I wanted to. You know, cleanse I, and do everything. I couldn't wait. Yeah. My, my, my health was telling me, Tony, you cannot wait. Those, those, that month, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it was when I started, that time was so important to me that I had to start immediately. Some of you should have started way, way, way back. But guess mm-hmm. what? Today is a new day. Stop making up excuses. Make your mind up and make a decision that I'm going to take some action. That I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do regarding my finance, creating a budget. You know, stop living above my means. Stop buying stuff that I can't afford. I mean, man, make you got to make so many make changes, changes. We all need to make. Yeah. But it first starts with you making up your mind and making a decision to do so. Yes. And let that be your mantra in 2018 that you're going to do things different you know not just and you know because we're talking about both health and wealth um but you know as far as your your wealth is concerned make a decision that you're going to grow some how about that hello you know i want to grow some Mm -hmm. i want to have something to you know for later you know i don't want to be at some point you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired 
So some of you have not made that decision. You've not made the decision. You're okay. You're still comfortable being stressed out, not having enough, spending too much, right. not accounting for things. You're okay with that. Mm -hmm. So we still want to encourage you to change that thinking even because that long term is not a good plan. Okay. Right, right. Some people have a plan. It's just not maybe a good one. It's not a good plan. Yes. Or if you have a plan and you're not working your plan, that's still not it's good. Still, still not good. You know, LaShonda, I was watching this weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm liking uh, Tiffany Haddish. So I was watching one of her comedy specials mm -hmm. and she was speaking about, you know, generational wealth and how important it is to her to leave her family a legacy and where she came from. And I was having the conversation with someone. I said, you know, if we all could, you know, just sit back and really think about it. One thing that she said that stuck out to me, she said, she is determined to leave a will and not a bill. Well, I love that. And I've seen that a couple of places. I um, want to leave a will, on, not a bill. On um, social media. Yes. The only way that you're going to be able to leave a will and not a bill is you go make a will. You got to make a will. You make bills. <laughs> so make a will. Right. How do you do that? You call us 1-844-700-4463. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number. <laughs> That's it. Okay, or you email me at LaShonda J at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. And I'm Tony S at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. You can also reach us on all our social media platforms. We're on Meetup, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook as the Houston Housewives of Finance official. official. If it doesn't say official, it's, it's not, not us. us. So, you know, it's all kind of ways. Yes, you guys, first of all, I'm going to take it even a step further. Get rid of the bills and leave a will. Hello. Okay. Uh, and make sure when you leave a will that you leave something in it. That's, hello. you know, you got to leave something you know, in it. Uh, fund it. Fund the will. You know, fund the will through a legacy. How do you do that? You call us mm -hmm. at 1 844 700 4463. Or you can also reach us at info at Houston com. Absolutely. And just Google us. There's so, so many ways to get in contact with us. Again, we are your resource for financial services mm -hmm. uh, from the cradle to the grave. Mm -hmm. You need our services. Contact us. Um, Come you to the get workshop. The work Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's, you know, hey, if you're a millennial and you're watching us, make sure you come out on the 28th. Uh, that's going to be uh, December 28th, 28, mm -hmm. uh, 7 p.m. This is for millennials specific. Now, we have other workshops that are going on every Tuesday, that's tomorrow, and every Saturday. And that address is 2500 East TC Jester Suite 345. That's Houston, Texas, 77008. Our national campaign for financial literacy is in full force. We're going into what, now the second, third year? Third year. Third year. Mm -hmm. And so we our, our goal is to educate 1 million people by 2020. This is the World System Builder Initiative that we, you know, of course, we're part of. And you guys, listen, if you are not doing anything to put yourself in a better position, then you can expect what you get. Hmm. And so, and then there's no one to blame but, but you. you, not legislature, not Congress, not whatever, because really these things are happening on a broad scale, but you get to manage your everyday funds that you mm -hmm. work hard for on a daily basis. So you've got to learn how to become your own money manager right. on an everyday on a daily basis. basis. Right. And so those, those workshops are complimentary. The blue book we're trying to give you, we've been trying to give you now for 86 episodes, and is you, complimentary. You have to get a copy. So you need a copy of that book. You hey, that call makes us a great that. Christmas present. I'm it just does. saying. That makes a great Christmas yeah. present to give to the ones you love. You want to leave a legacy. You got to know how. You got to understand. You want to become your own ma money manager. The mm -hmm. blue book, that is your financial Bible. You need to have a copy. We've been saying it for over. 86 episodes. Oh, my goodness. That would be 86 weeks. Ooh. How many weeks in a year? 52. 52. Over a year, you guys. I'm just saying. And it will make you quite dope. So with that being <laughs> said, this portion of the show is being sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at KOGPassion.com. That's KOGPassion.com. 
com and use the coupon code uh, D O P E exclamation for ten percent off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness Apparel. Act now, sizes are selling out fast. Again, guess what? Christmas is a week away. This makes a great Christmas gift. Mm-hmm. So you want to get out? I, I know. Guess what? Millennials would love this. You yes, because even even grown folks. Yes. Oh it's yeah, dope. because I I was able to get uh, uh get one from uh, KG. I yes. ordered one. So dope. I saw her. Um, oh, shout out to the Spear and um, the new studios. Um, great. Yeah. Um, holiday social. This was the first in the Spears new studios. Woo-hoo. And man, there's going to be some really great things coming from our brand mm-hmm. in January, but also um, from the Spear podcast uh, studios and network and TV and all that. Man, they got up it going on. One. Hey, yeah, it's all, get kind all of, stuff of your uh, recording. Um, needs it right here i mean because you can do audio all of that uh, i mean you name it they have it you gotta call yeah. what's the number again okay let's go back to the number to this beer it's 832-772-7789 or send over an email at advertise at the tv this is where you want to be yes this yes. is where you want to be so now um let's go on to uh i think we have one more article one more article mm. <laughs> credit card interest rates going up Wow. You know, the Fed is working on that. You know, the Fed, you know, mm-hmm. when the economy looks too good, they they shake up some things a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Let's get a piece and of so, it. And uh, so, Tony, you want to talk about what credit cards are going to happen? Look at the little girl. Credit card costing you nearly $1,000 <laughs> per year. You know, I'm reading this because in my mind I'm thinking, and people are not even saving, Mm-mm. but you're paying in the interest. Mm-hmm. Let's see what it has to say. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It says there's plenty to crow about in the economic picture right now. The stock market is charging ahead of the economy is expanding. But the bad news is that credit card debt is on the rise. Nearly half of Americans carry credit card debt with an average balance of $15,654, according to the analysis by NerdWallet, based on the data of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and the U.S. Census Bureau. Credit card continue, credit cards continue, debt continues to be one of the <laughs> costliest kinds of debt for us. Households pay an average of $904 a year in interest alone, assuming an average annual percentage rate of 14.87 which we know that is not not true no and the price (laughs) is the bound to go up the federal reserve makes an anticipated rate increase the average cost of a credit card will go up to 919 a year oh wow finding a way to put money towards paying off debt especially high interest debt the best way to free yourself from the vice grip of debt it's a vice can, group it's a it's a Ball group and, and it There's has a lot of it has you yes for that. have you on a budget mm, you have to get on a budget you have that's what i was saying earlier you how can you to afford get not to with all of this and here's the thing i want to say you guys you got to know how much interest you're paying mm-hmm. you you can't just you know be oblivious it's not to, 14 percent yes you know and that's even high is uh, even uh, that's even high but on most retail cards you're looking at about 18 20, yeah. on an average 18 but they go as high as 29 mm-hmm. percent you're looking at you know credit card companies uh, retail i'm talking about retail these are your clothing stores your electronic stores etc they're they're look you're looking at anywhere from 22 to 24 percent on those cards wow so i kind of did the calculations that's about 77 dollars a month that's a lot that's a lot of money so i mean and if, especially if you're not paying yourself. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's, what if you have multiple, multiple, multiple? Well, it's going to be higher because we know that your card is not 14%. Correct. And then how much is your balance? Correct. Exactly. And how many cards do you have? Ooh. And that's talking about credit cards. We're not talking about other things that we pay interest on, like right. student loans. Absolutely. Like signature loans, mm. like personal loans, like car loans. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Right. Budget, budget, budget. This is where we need to, dun, dun, dun. you know, that we need that. We need that. <laughs> because these are, you know, and then you can hear the cash register on the back end for the people who are collecting from you. They're doing the cha-ching. They're doing the cha-ching. Yes, yes. They're doing that. That's what they're doing. But we need to hear that in our personal finances, in our personal bank accounts. We need to hear those cha-chings. And who's responsible for that? We are. We are. So, different decisions we got to make some different decisions um man so the thing we like to encourage with credit card debts is just not to have it no pay it off you know because every dime you pay them you're robbing yourself 
So um, if you're going to use them, be responsible with them and pay them off. Maybe a situation arises where you can't. Okay, I get that. How about making some extra money so you can eradicate your debt? Mm -hmm. Get rid of it, erase it, not keep lugging it. Some people have been carrying debt oh my God. from years and years and years and years mm -hmm. back, but they keep adding on to the debt. Right. So it appears... Um, that no, it's new money or new money that you owe out, but it's not. It's you old. owe some old money plus you're adding on new debt to that. Absolutely, with the credit card. So you have to consider that when it's you're doing your good combination, your last minute Christmas shopping. Be beware, oh, buyer yeah. beware. Yeah, I mean we we did another show that talked about mm -hmm. not just making a decision with people and say well, we're not going to do Christmas this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's do Christmas in a different way. Not that we're not going to do Christmas, right. but we're not going to do the shopping thing, the gift giving thing. We're going to give gifts, but in a different way. Right. Some way that's more economical for us and does not put us in a bind. So um, budget is the key word for 2018. Absolutely. All this really just goes back to having a budget and knowing where you, where, knowing where everything is going to go, but also knowing what you're paying out. Mm-hmm. In interest, know what you're paying on all of your debts that you have. How much interest are you paying? This is the time now to start making some phone calls mm -hmm. to your bank, right? to your creditors. How much am I paying? You know, clearing things out. Right. You know, I know last year before we closed out the year, we did a financial uh, cleanup, mm -hmm. clean up your financial house. Right. And I just want to piggyback off of some of that. You know, you do have to. Um, you've got to clean up your financial house. This is when you need to start looking at your statements, seeing where you're paying stuff that you right. shouldn't be paying, the automatic stuff. Remember how much mm -hmm. money you found? Right. Getting rid of automatic stuff. You have stuff. to get them out of automatics. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the time for, to be able to do those things. So um, we don't even have a lot of time for the Saving Your Future book. No, not today. But, but I would just encourage people, uh, with it being the, the close of uh, our 2017 uh, year uh, for, for our podcast, that you know we just encourage you in 2018, please. Please, just moving forward, contact us. Number one, you have to get educated. Number two, um, you, to create a budget, um, you have to attend the workshops, and you must get a copy of the Saving Your Future book, and you must get a personal financial strategy. If you don't have a plan, you still don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's 17, 18, 19, or 20. We're trying to plan for you to move up the, ahead of the road and, and be ahead of the game financially uh, when it comes to your money. When are you going to take a heed and take action to change your life? So I encourage each and every person to you know, take take a chance on you mm -hmm. and, and change your life. Mm -hmm. If you don't call me, call Ashonda. Mm -hmm. Just give us a call. We have so many other affiliates that can help you. It's just not um, she and I, but we just want to help you, you know, to change your life financially so that you can save your future. Absolutely. I mean, I don't. there's nothing else to say to that. Uh, have a merry, merry Christmas. Be wise. Uh, call us because Christmas is next week, but there's still time in the year to get your, your situation together for 2018. So Absolutely. we look forward to seeing you in the new year. In the new year. Yes, next time we see you will be 2018. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. with that said, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy you guys. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Enjoy everything. And we'll see you back here after the new year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.